Concerned about how little you have saved for retirement? A new study offers hope. Hope and change, hope and change. Dateline, uh, April 5th, 2020 from Barron's. A uh, number of you has sent me this. Um, and of course, if I get multiple uh, vit articles from people, I know that there is some interest. How do I, I got my, oh, it was the wrong way. Did I go that way? Oh, here we go, sweet. All right. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got. Nick Fortuna, I've read him a couple of times. And we, uh, all right, let's take a look. Low and middle income workers who haven't been able to save much for retirement not be as ill prepared as a financial punditry would have you believe. <laughs> a finding that can help ease seniors' anxiety surrounding the adequacy of their post work income. Dude, it's not just seniors, Nick. <laughs> The seniors are the furthest thing from worried about this. It's the freaking mid-level people. I can't ever retire. I don't have enough money. I need five billion, says Susie Orman. And one guy said that Susie Orman is backing off that. Kind of like the modelers and climate change and the COVID crisis people. Can we just stop believing any of the modelers? For heaven's sake, man. Just stop. Stop. Just. All right. Let's keep going. According to a recent paper at the NBER, uh, National Bureau of Economic Research, titled, Can Low Retirement Savings Be Rationalized? Uh, the current meager returns from safe investments like bonds and CDs don't justify delaying consumption as they had when interest rates are higher. That's a little bit different uh, point of view here, so let's keep reading. So they're saying... Uh, a little who have been who have been able to save much might not be as ill prepared uh, for retirement based on a paper that says the meager returns from safe investments like bonds and CDs don't justify delaying consumption. Yeah, it seems that doesn't make sense there. That's not congruent at all. What's more, the paper's authors contend the conventional wisdom on adequate retirement savings fails to account for declining consumption. You think? Meaning that those with uh, that those who can't save a lot in the first place may be able to get by with less in retirement. Uh, the paper's conclusion: many people in the bottom half of lifetime earnings should spend their retirement wealth uh, well before death and live on Social Security alone. After that, I, it said, even says the lowest earners might find it best to not engage in retirement savings at all. Now, John Chauvin, I've done some videos on here, him when we talked about uh, Social Securities over at Standard, Stanford. Yep. Um, I did a number of, I uh, talked about social security, delaying social security is the best hedge. I did a couple of videos because he had a couple of argu uh, articles on this. I took umbrage with a couple of things he was saying, actually. Um, hmm, maybe he's been watching old Josh's videos. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm surprised to hear that this guy is saying that, uh, that the consumption drops in retirement. I mean, I'm, I like it. I just tells me that maybe, uh, cooler heads can prevail in this stuff. The conventional wisdom uh, on retirement adequ adequate retirement savings fails to account for savings decli or declining consumption. Yeah, well, good, man. So uh, economist at Stanford is John Chauvin and one of the paper's co-authors. The real uh, inflation adjustment returns are negative. At, we was talking about CDs and bonds. Uh, so people and maybe so people are uh, and maybe even should consume at a higher level early in retirement with the consequence that they're going to have to have a lower standard of living the second half. Well, they're going to have a, they're not going to have to have, they do have a lower standard of living in the second half. I mean, that's what happens. Yeah, it's just the numbers are, it's not that they're going to have to, like it's imposed upon them. That's what Jonathan Clements argued against Ty Bernicke's article from 2005 in the Journal for Financial Planning. He says people run out of money. That's literally what he said. No evidence at all, but because he comes from the Wall Street Journal and Ty Bernicke was just some guy, some financial advisor up in, uh, in uh, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, everyone you know, said, Jonathan Clements, wow, he's speaking God's word. It's crazy. In decades past, what prevented people from spending resources immediately was that they could expect to earn a steady 2 or 3% through safe investments. By saving instead of giving in to their impatience, investors could increase their assets and enjoy more purchasing power in future years. Since the recession, however, interest rates have remained near historic lows. All right. Da, da. When the Fed adjusted for inflation of around 2%, investors are getting a negative yield. Oh, just don't do it. Yeah. Uh, and so they're getting a negative yield, thus decreasing their future purchasing power. With interest rates likely to stay low for the foreseeable future, safe investments have little appeal for retirees with modest savings. 
Another problem with a typical savings strategy, he said, is that it envisions a steady level of consumption throughout a lengthy retirement. It assumes a steady level of assumption, consumption throughout a lengthy retirement. But low interest rates justify a tilted approach to consumption, where seniors in the little middle income brackets would use most of up their savings within three to ten years of retirement. Some people die early in retirement and others will develop physical or cognitive impairments, limiting their ability to travel, leave the home and enjoy their money. Therefore, as seniors age, their discretionary spending will likely decrease. It's not like we, it's, without question, that's true. We, the evidence is on that. While basic monthly expenses like the mortgage payments and utilities fall flat or stay flat. So their discretionary spending decreases while their basic monthly expenses like mortgage, please don't have a mortgage and utilities, they don't stay flat. Utilities do go up, which is one of the arguments I will say of uh, investing in PV photovoltaic panels, because you invest in it with a fixed cost and the price of utilities certainly isn't going down. Well, it depends on what year you're looking at, to be honest with you. I just saw 139 for a gallon of gasoline. You know, that's not utilities, but they all come from the same thing. Fossil fuels, natural gas, Bowman. Yeah, either way. I actually, I think that's one of the better arguments for photovoltaic. You're locking, it's almost like a fixed rate mortgage. You're locking in, in an inflationary economy, which most likely, which we've historically been in, you're locking in a fixed payment when a value of the dollar keeps declining. You see what I'm saying? So basically what's happening is you're locking in this fixed payment here, but the price of the actual dollar bill that you're using to pay that fixed payment is less than every year because inflation, which means as a debt door, you are better off in an inflationary environment. Same thing happens with uh, if you look at uh, financing a photovoltaic uh, array on your rooftop or even better yet on your ground behind you there. You, you, the rooftop photo, photovoltaics are always not as efficient as on the ground. I won't go into that here, but you should read that. If you, if you have the land, you should definitely look at doing ground-based uh, PV panels and not on your roof. But it doesn't make so what you're doing is you're saying, I will spend $30,000 to finance this, and now the value of that dollar is going to decrease. So essentially, my $30,000 becomes less and less uh, costly to me because it costs less to pay for it as inflation eats away the value of the dollar. I will keep going on. Uh, if your target is no longer a flat level consumption during retirement, but this kind of tilted consumption, it turns out you need to save less for retirement. If your target is no longer a flat level consumption, it's not a flat level consumption. We've all been arguing against, uh, no, not we, not me. Most people argue that's a fixed level consumption uh, going adjusted with inflation every year. And what John is saying, I don't know this guy, I'm just going to call him John because we'll, we'll be buddies here. It's a flat level consumption. No, what we say is a declining level of consumption. So John is saying if your target is no longer a flat level consumption, but actually uh, it needs, uh, uh, but this kind of tilted consumption where it goes down, you need to save less. To be sure, uh, Showen find, said the findings on early spending don't apply to retirees with high risk tolerance or ample savings, since the potential long term gains from investments like stocks could reward investors, unlike safer investments. Uh, also, because Social Security might not be enough to maintain their standard of living, high income seniors need to be careful about exhausting their savings too early. Still, Chauvin said retirees all along the income spectrum should use their savings to delay taking Social Security benefits as long as possible, blah, blah, blah. All right. Um, all right. So Social Security is providing you a substantial for or base in retirement. And what you have above that, you may want to spend out in your early uh, years in your retirement. So enjoy it at that time. So let's see what some of the comments are here. What is if it? All right, so what a stupid conclusion to withdraw uh, to draw, says Tanya. If interest rates are low, that doesn't mean you won't need to eat, live indoors, and have electricity in your later years. He just already said that, that your consumption is going to be level for those things right there. Um, but there will be less, uh, they will decline for your discretionary stuff. Uh, you still, or don't have a mortgage. Yeah. Just think, after you spend everything you've got, you might luck out and die. Thanks for the advice. Now we're saying, I propose a test of this hypothesis. Let's have the authors propose uh, live on social care for one year and come back and tell us how that worked out. That's a stupid thing to say. The authors put a lot of faith in social security payments and continue as currently expected. Lousy advice, social security is not properly adjusted for inflation and in both Medicare and social security going broke. The government will take care of itself. All right. This actually makes some sense. Save what you can, but don't worry about being retired for 30 years. If you're in good enough shape to live another 30 years, it's okay. How many 95-year-old people do you know who can still do anything more than sit in a chair? 
All right, uh, boy, what an uplifting article. Really need a Stanford professor to tell us that we should just forget about the future and spend anything they have now. How irresponsible. That is how 50% of the Americans live now. There's nothing new here. If everyone follows this vice, uh, everyone's consumption will increase in old age via the taxes need to provide the social. Oh, God. It's like, literally, it's like you're, lit, you're reading the people who uh, argue against you're not worried about the coronavirus killing everybody. Uh, you know, you're not worried about the coronavirus killing 2.2 million. He's adjusted downward because he said if he don't do anything, it'll be 2.2 million. Yeah, ironic how he just it, huh? Yeah, freaking. All these guys are the models nuts. But at least this guy, and that's the same thing, man. The negative Nellies are always out there stamping on their keyboards, wanting you to be scared with them. Screw that. I'm just, I'm tired of people being scared. It's nuts. I, just show me something to be scared of that's real. Uh, what would it be? The Patriots without Tom Brady. That's real. That's a real fear I have. Uh, obesity. That's a real fear um, that many Americans should have. Heart disease. Absolutely. Um, there's lots of things to be scared of, uh, but these things that are debilitating to people, it's just, it's nuts. And yet here we are. Social security. Uh, retirement crisis, CO2 crisis, environmental crisis, retirement crisis, uh, and then, of course, the uh, the commie virus crisis. What else? There's another one I'm drawing a blank on. Oh, Trump's a Nazi crisis. That's one. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for the time being. So there you go. Good article. I, I don't disagree at all.